Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 19 of the chapter Equilibrium. In part 17, we started discussing the factors affecting equilibria. And I told you that there are these five factors that we would be discussing in the consecutive videos. The five factors were the change in concentration of the reactant or product, the change in pressure, the addition of an inert gas, a change in temperature and the addition of a catalyst. In part 18, I told you about the, or we were discussing the effect of concentration on equilibrium. Moving ahead with the same discussion or the same factor, I would now like to explain an experiment to you which can, uh, through which you can understand the effect of change in concentration on the equilibrium. The example that we take, or experimentally, we take a few drops of potassium thiocyanate and potassium thiocyanate acts as the source of thiocyanate ions and ferric nitrate, that is FeNO3 whole thrice. These two ionic compounds are mixed in water and both of them act as sources of the ferric ions and the thiocyanate ions. The ferric ions, that is ferric nitrate, is yellow in color and the potassium thiocyanate is colorless. When we mix these two, we observe that a reaction, both of, both of these ions react with each other and result in the formation of ferric thiocyanate, a complex ion. The ferric ion has a three positive charge and the thiocyanate ion has a one negative charge. So when they together form an ion, a complex ion, the overall charge is one positive and one negative are cancelled out. So you're left with two positive charges and therefore this ion has a charge of two positive. Now, what is it that draws our attention and why do we use this example to experimentally understand the effect of concentration? The solution which initially was yellow due to the presence of these ferric ions in ferric nitrate. When it forms ferric thiocyanate complex ion, it turns red. The color of this ion is deep red. If you have a pure solution of ferric thiocyanate, it would be a deep red color. <coughs> so the yellow color starts changing into this red color. And since it's a reversible reaction, the opposite reaction is also taking place. So at a certain state when the equilibrium is established, the pink color or the red color, it becomes constant. Because now, no more the concentration of the ferric thiocyanate ion, it has become constant. And since it is constant, the number of ions is constant in the solution, the red color that it is imparting also becomes constant. So that is when we understand that the equilibrium has been established. So equilibrium constant for uh, when the equilibrium is established would be that you would have this ferric thiocyanate ions, that is the product, divided by the concentration of the reactants, that is the ferric ions and the thiocyanate ions, which are being given by potassium thiocyanate and ferric nitrate solution. So if two drops of 0.002 molar potassium thiocyanate solution is added to 1 milliliter of 0.2 molar ferric nitrate solution, a reddish color appears due to the formation of ferric thiocyanate ion. The intensity of the red color becomes constant at equilibrium. So this much you understand. Now the topic is that we want to understand through this experiment what would be the effect of change of concentration on this equilibrium? So we have now understood that equilibrium is established and the red color is now constant. So we can bring about a change in this color, this red color. How can we bring about a change in the red color? If we can somehow change the concentration of the ions, that is the product, the ferric thiocyanate ions, if their concentration changes, the red color will change. If the concentration increases, the deep red color, the red color will become darker and darker. And if this concentration decreases, the red color will become lighter and lighter. So how can we do that? We know that if we add a reactant to or a product, what is the effect according to Lee Shatley's principle? Whenever you add something, there is a stress that is created and the equilibrium will shift in that direction where whatever has been added, the stress of that added substance is removed. That is, some of that added substance is removed. So if you add a reactant, the reaction will proceed in that direction that it uses up that reactant. So the reaction will proceed in the forward direction so that it uses the reactant and therefore 
<coughs> therefore the concentration of the added concentration can be balanced and equilibrium can be established again okay. now a new equilibrium will be established because more of iron let us say i added ferric ions in some way and by adding more ferric nitrate if i did that the reaction will proceed in the forward direction and therefore the red color will become deeper but a new equilibrium will be established and this time the red color of this new equilibrium will be deeper on the other hand i can change the concentration of the reactants by removing the reactants so when we are doing this experimentally removing the reactants how do we do it it's in a solution both of these reactants are present in a solution so removing it from a solution where they are perfectly soluble is not easy so what we do we add something to the solution in such a way that it reacts with one of these ions and it reacts in such a way that it makes a more stable compound than this complex ion so if that substance that we have added makes a more stable compound what will happen it is blocking this ion it is blocking that particular ion which is with which it reacts to form a more stable compound so that is what we do in these two examples this equilibrium can be shifted forward or backward by changing the concentrations we can change this equilibrium backwards if ferric and thiocyanate ions are removed by some way we take two examples like this in the first example if you add oxalic acid oxalic acid is h2c2o4 if you add oxalic acid the oxalic acid reacts with ferric ions the ferric ions which were present ferric nitrate we dissolved the ferric ions are now free in the solution to react with thiocyanate ions but we add oxalic acid now in comparison to thiocyanate ions the oxalic acid has a stronger affinity for ferric ions so whenever you have your playing ball and there's a player who has who is stronger than you the chances of him getting the ball is more than you so the thiocyanate is not such a strong player and the oxalic acid is a stronger player and the ferric ion is the ball that it can catch so oxalic acid catches that ball and it forms a, and it holds it strongly so if you add oxalic acid it reacts with ferric ions to form a stable complex and this stable complex is even more stable than the ferric thiocyanate complex ion this stable complex is fec2o4 whole thrice three positive so now you, now this complex ion is far more stable than this complex ion so what happens as a result of this the ferric ions which were present in the solution get so busy or are caught by the oxalate uh, or the, by the oxalic acid and or the oxalate ion and it holds on to it therefore the ferric ions are no longer available to react with the thiocyanate ions to form this complex so as soon as what, what is the net effect of this what will the equilibrium understand the equilibrium sees that it had ferric ions to have this pink color or the red color of the ferric thiocyanate all of a sudden the ferric ions are no longer available for reaction so the equilibrium understands this as a loss of ferric ions that ferric ions have been removed we have to replenish the ferric ions so who will replenish the ferric ions the product it starts dissociating to give you more ferric ions to have a new balance therefore the red color of the solution it will start becoming lighter and lighter in other words the reaction proceeds in the backward direction a similar example is a second you add mercury chloride when you add mercury chloride mercury chloride the mercury in the mercury chloride it reacts with thiocyanate ions and it forms a complex with them and this complex is far more stable than the ferric thiocyanate ion complex so it forms also it reduces if this will also reduce the red color why because now it is using up the thiocyanate ions and the equilibrium understands that the thiocyanate ions have been have been removed and since they have been removed they should be replenished in order to replenish the product dissociates and the red color becomes lighter so we say mercury chloride also reduces the red color due to the formation of mercury thiocyanate ion and removal of scn negative uh, it, it understands it as the removal of scn negative and therefore the reaction proceeds in the backward direction on the other hand you could make the reaction proceed in the forward direction how by giving more and more of reactants or removing the product 
So if you give more reactant, for example, if you add more of potassium thiocyanate, it would potassium thiocyanate will increase the concentration of thiocyanate ions as a result of which the equilibrium understands oh my god there's too much of thiocyanate we must reduce it how do we do it use it up on this side so it uses up a little ferric thio makes a little more ferric thiocyanate the color becomes darker the red color becomes darker and thus a new equilibrium is established with a darker red color so this was an experiment to explain how constant or to actually visually see how the concentration affects equilibrium. And now in the next video, I'm going to come to the next uh, factor that affects equilibrium, that is a change in pressure. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.